welcome everybody. This is the Justice Team podcast and it's going to be airing on the Justice Team Network. I am joined today by a gentleman with the coolest name I've heard in quite some time, Charles Bronson of Emotion Track. Did I get that right, Charles? Yeah, that's right. Emotion Track. Emotion Track, right? This again is Ronan Duggan. I'm standing in for Bob Simon. I am AI. I am Bob Simon's AI, actually Irish. Charles. Good to have you. Now tell us, what do you do, Charles? Tell us all about it. Emotion track. Where do we even start? Yeah, well, I like the AI part. That's good. I haven't heard that. Uh, so every attorney, no matter what walk of life they're in, they want to know what people think about their case, correct? A hundred percent. So what we do is we change one word in that phrase, in that sentence. So we help attorneys find out, discover, we help them know what people feel Right. About their case. Yeah, I can tell you that our job fundamentally is to get get a sense of where our case lies with human thought, human feeling. So tell us more. What do you do then? Yeah, say so. So you just said thought and feeling in the same sentence, and uh, we got to separate that out. So everyone's uh, one one of the premier historical trial attorneys is Jerry Spence. Yes, and he said that every decision that we make is based on some emotion that we have, and then we find reason to justify it. Very good. And in a shorter form is feelings are the ultimate decision makers. Right. So, uh, and and I remember hearing uh, Lanier last year, and Lanier was talking about his psychology practice and whatnot, and he said that the jury or a room or someone you meet is gonna decide how you land with them, yes. how they feel about you in one thirty-fifth of a second. Yeah, do me a favor. So that's you, pretty quick. Right. When you throw names like Lanier, he's one of the, even I know him, he's one of the top trial attorneys on the planet. So you're talking about these high-end superhumans who've been doing this for a while and trying to figure out these emotions with just their old, old-fashioned old brains, right? Correct. Okay, so what yeah. do you do then? Yeah, so here's what we do. What we do is we work with video. So we can work with a commercial spot that an attorney wants to air. We can work with a commercial spot that uh, Corona Beer and Snoop Dogg want to air um, before they spend two and a half million bucks on the media buy. Right? Yes. Uh, but I fell in with the motion track working on the, uh, on the trial attorney side. So the whole idea is to give an attorney the knowledge the EQ, I call it the emotional intelligence. Emotional quotient. The it? emotional yeah. quotient behind their arguments. And the easiest argument to work with is a mini opening statement uh, or an opening statement or a clopening, which is a closing and, and, uh, and an opening mixed together. So, you know, we could work with a 20 minute video. We have with uh, Danny Rodriguez. We can work with a 50 second video. Um, and we just did one with Evan, and it's about a 12-minute video. Is that Evan Garcia, the, That's trucking, that, yeah, the, the trucking guru? The world-famous Evan yeah. Garcia, yeah. And he's in trial right now. Um, God bless him and all the Garcias. <laughs> and all the Garcias. 100 people are going to watch this video, whatever medium, whatever element we're talking about. While they watch it, we are decoding the movements of their faces. Yes. We don't care what they're thinking. We don't care uh, what they actually do. We don't care what you actually see because what we're picking up is the teeny motion of their face before it's visible to the human eye. So would this mean I'm really sad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, here's the easiest one. The easiest one to recognize is contempt. Contempt. And contempt is, and you can, you can model it as you go around the countryside today, contempt is when one piece of your mouth, one side of your mouth has an uptick Right. And the other side is stable. That's so strange. My wife does that nearly every day. Yeah. Every yeah. day I see that face. I thought it was love and, 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 it's, and it's not adoration. Love. It's not okay. love. But yeah, you know, it's funny because a lot of, uh, not a lot, but attorneys will come up and we'll talk to them at the booth or something like that. And they'll say, can I use this with my wife? And the answer <laughs> is, no, you'd best go to John Gottman, the marriage counselor. Let me, let me, let me back up. Sorry. I tend yeah. to dive on when I should stop and listen. What's your background? Like, why, why are you getting into this or why did you get into this? Oh, well, me personally, I was at a trade show representing a software company and somebody came up and asked for the elevator pitch. <laughs> and um, that person said, well, that sounds pretty boring. 
Lovely. And I said, well, give me your elevator pitch. Yeah. And I said, that doesn't sound boring. And that is blue ocean. So I want to work with you. And two I mean, weeks what, later. What, I, I'm as ignorant as I yeah. am Irish. Well, tell me, what's blue ocean? What was that? Oh, blue ocean is a phrase in the, in the tech and the startup world. that means no one's done it before. Wow. Yeah. So tell me, when you talk about film and that, so you, you would film, say, like a, you know, a, a subject group of people who are hearing about a case. And then that, that, that film is then analyzed by what? Yes, good point. So actually, we're not filming anybody. We are giving them, um, we're giving them the video. We drop it into our audience and 100 people watch it. And they're watching it on their smartphone. Ah, okay. So we have two patents around that they capture technology. Got it. So while they're watching it, we're catching and analyzing in real time. Meaning the software is detecting what their face is yeah. doing against the phone. Yeah. Could that be, oh, that's amazing. Can, can that be translated to filming, say, a focus group and then filming the people in the group and then doing the same thing? Or does it have to be that close? Yeah, no, it has to be that close at this point. Um, because here's the other idea was that if we did film a focus group, then we would need to have the camera concentrated on each face. Got it. Now, I'm sure that in future, then we could have a camera that's smart enough to capture 10 faces. Right. And that's probably an excellent way to go, uh, a direction to move in. So this is a focus group on steroids because we're doing 100 people. Right. And you're doing a focus group with 6, 8, 10 people. And the issue with focus groups, I mean, I have, we're, we're not trying to replace focus groups because you get good information from them from a discussional standpoint. Yeah. I'm not sure that's a word. No, I think it is. And I, you, you also have to ask the right questions to evoke the responses, right? Yeah. So when I did one focus group uh, with an attorney in an office, and every question that they asked, unless I was the first respondent, every single question, when I answered it, was influenced by the one, two, three, four, five people I heard beforehand. Yeah. So that's the group dynamics, and we get rid of that. Have you done any analysis to see if an Irish accent asking a particularly disturbing question gets a nicer response emotionally? Yeah, no, yeah, no, definitely the Irish, and, and the, the more northern it is, the better it works. Oh, shit, I'm southern. Oh, you're southern, I'm you're very from Cork southern, or yeah. someplace down there? This is southeast Wexford. Of oh, yeah, yeah no, you're screwed. Yeah, uh, no, that's not right. going to work. But, um, and here's the other part of it is that, because uh, attorneys are concerned about this, and uh, the technology is all capturing unconscious reactions, right? Depending on the literature that you Google or look up or who you talk to, it can take um, a half a second to four seconds for a thought to come out of our pea brains. Meaning for me to think and my face or my wife to do the contempt smile. Yeah. 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 It could take three seconds. Um, as you're speaking in the video, we're capturing the the you know we're capturing it in a nanosecond. I think right. we beat the one thirty fifth of a second that Linear talks about. Wow! So we're catching it in the nanosecond that is happening, but we're capturing a hundred people at once. Yeah. And we're measuring. We've we've boiled it down to twenty nine emotions. So we're capturing a hundred times twenty nine. What's that? Two thousand nine hundred yeah. every second. But the AI is taking those 2,900 images and rendering them for against the entire database of tens of millions that we've captured. Hey, tell me again, how many emotions did you say you boil it down to? Well, we, we, we're, we're, we've told that it's, we're heat seeking for 29. 29. But then we amalgamate them. Uh, I was only aware of three emotions, so this is new to me. This is giving me uh, happy. This, yeah, happy, sad, and, and drunk. <laughs> yeah but okay i tell you what, what uh, sorry I mean, don't mind me but what's the most exotic emotion that you detect if you could describe such a thing oh you know i think it's uh, i think it's the ne i think it's on the negative side so for me i think the most exotic uh, uh moment is uh emotion is disgust disgust right yeah, yeah. right i mean revulsion disgust outrage right. yeah i just like to say i'll add something on behalf of my <laughs> my former nation not all Irish people drink, so the joke about the drunk emotion was in bad taste. <laughs> now tell me, years ago I remember seeing a show where they, it was one of these case, cold file type cases. Yeah. And they, were, they had an interview of a boyfriend who wasn't initially suspected of having killed his girlfriend. 
and a, a local news channel had filmed him and his visual cues were then picked up on by some FBI specialist sure. yeah, who yeah, said yeah. that dude's lying. Sure. So this is kind of an enhanced version of that in the modern era. Yeah. So, you know, if I talk to people, whenever we start talking to someone, they first go to facial recognition, right? For security purposes, because everyone, I mean, at the airport today, right? Everyone's getting facial recognized or facial captured. And then the next thing is lie detection, yes. right? And uh, so we're not we're not concerned about any of that stuff. We're just concerned about the emotions that that are responses to your case, so we can help you know what's going on. And you know that's a, that's a, when I talk to attorneys like that. There's an attorney in Seattle that is you know a Spence guy, been to the ranch, taught at the ranch, and he said, you know, you're taking me into an area that I don't really, I'm not really comfortable going in. Why, what, feelings right. and emotions and whatnot. I said, but um, I said, Mr. E, what's the problem? You go there all the time. It's Mr. E, by the way. He just <laughs> announced the guy's name is Mr. E. Eric, Eric, that's where you have to go. And I know that you yeah. know if anyone has been to the ranch, they've gone there. Yeah. Because they get you know they get destructed, self destruct, and then built up again. Wow. So, so I mean, here here's a here's a just one quick example. So an attorney. Um, contacts me and says, I want to use you guys on a case because I don't know if I have a case. And in a paragraph, he says, I have a fellow who was on a cell phone and didn't stop and crossed a railroad track and was killed. So I need to know whether I have a case or yes. not. So what are the bad facts there? The bad facts are he didn't stop. He was on a cell phone and he got himself killed. Yes. Right? Yes. So if you told that story and you showed some pictures and then you did a focus group, and then I can bet you a, a buck that um, if there are eight people there, nine people would say it was his fault. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you got to get in and develop the, uh, develop the whole story and look at, okay, how fast is the train going? Yes. Right? What did the engineer have to say about it? He's been driving that route for five years. And then you'd look and you say, well, the, uh, the California PUC, Public Utility Commission, came out and did a study for one hour. Right. One hour. Yeah. One random hour. And you see the new emotional content okay. emerging in the people listening to what they didn't do. But see, what we can say, what the attorney can say in his story is, PUC came out for one hour. And while they were there, they recorded nine instances of people not stopping at that stop Got it. sign. Got it. So, okay, so that's, that's, that's a rational discussion. Nine people didn't stop. They didn't say how many people crossed, right? It didn't say, well, nine out of 9,000. Yes. They just said nine people didn't stop. Wow. So yeah. what do you do with that? Information from a rational standpoint, well, we throw that all away. We say, you don't need the rational discussion there just look at the graph look at right i want to look at the graph there's a couple of things that occurs to me about this so obviously we would consider this and we in our profession consider this a very useful thing and it's been you it'd be used for good to detect what we have to deal with in terms of a landscape of people who will appraise our cases i want to know do will other industries be using technology like this in interviews and all that kind of carry on i'm just curious if you know anything about that uh, well, I, you know, I've got an anecdote for you. So an anecdote for you is... Uh, anecdotes excite me greatly. It's anecdotes accepted. So uh, um, uh, Paris, Rex was talking in the in, in first time I met him a couple of years ago. Rex Paris is a very handy attorney. I think he's in the inland, isn't he? Yeah, he's in yeah, the... I've yeah. never met him, but he's a handy chap. But he was talking about um, using this technology like five years ago with a company from Wisconsin and he wanted to invest in the company and they disappeared. And they never found out what happened to that company, but I think that he said in his presentation that we think they got purchased by Apple. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, I think if you want to know yeah. the truth, and I mean, I know there's tech guys that will, on their home computer, all their computers are cover up the, the, uh, yeah. the yeah. camera, yeah. right? Yeah. Be because they, the, the real deep tech guys are, are pretty sure that they're being monitored yeah. So yeah. Well, so, well, it even occurs to me if I presume even we're in an election year, the, the thoughts and sorry, the feelings and the emotions of uh, potential voters would be very relevant. So I can imagine these kind of technologies have leached out into that sphere in some way. 
well, there's a guy that's speaking every day out in the hinterland there who's just speaking pure nonsense, but everyone's pretty riled up. Yeah. But and the smart money would say, why don't we take this guy and give him the messages that are going to produce votes? Yeah. Right? And uh, so, you know, if we get someone in the political arena, it's, it's okay, they're going to, I mean, they have huge market research companies doing their stuff, right? Yes. And they have huge exposure out there on the campaign trail. But I would think that what they do, they would say, okay, let's get our 25 messages. Let's have this guy or a gal speak those 25 messages. Right. And let's know which ones work. Are, are emotionally connecting. Yeah, emotionally connected. Oh, and Asha, so we, we, we digressed, which we tend to do. We did. But tell me this, when... In terms of the metric, like what scares us lawyers, I'll tell you right now, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I can be a, a young dinosaur in many ways, is additional information sometimes feels scary because it's another thing I have to analyze, right? So what is this condensed into in terms of a booklet or a page or a printout? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, really, really great question. So um, here's number one. Number one is, uh, number one is forcing you to sit down and make a five minute video condense your 45 minute opening statement into five minutes and remember in this medium you only have to say it once he didn't stop at the stop sign yeah you don't have to say it 45 times he didn't stop at the stop sign so universally and especially with younger lawyers they send us the video gotcha we have a setup call this is what tell us about the case what do you think you're trying to find out are you the one having these calls or yeah. do you have staff or what do you do? Yeah, no, I do. Well, okay. and, and my uh, other two, uh, the founder does them and our um, uh, chief revenue guy does them. Do you want to name them or is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aaron Iskowitz and uh, Jonathan Brickman. Mr. Iskowitz and Brickman. Yeah. So the three of us do. And this. Charles Bronson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You sound like a superhero <laughs> team in the 70s, but go on. So the three of us do that. And, you know, we've done enough of them so that we help you find out what you don't think you you know. Uh, so that's number one. You make the video, you send it to us, we reject it and tell you to do it better. Meaning do it differently. Condense it, get to the point of the of the of the issues. Yeah, so okay. yeah, so here's a good example. So someone gave one the other day and um, um, I sent it back and said, You forgot the seatbelt. He said Did the driver forget the seatbelt as well? No, what happened <laughs> was that yeah, no, what happened? This is interesting though. What happened was the, the, the driver um, was wearing a seatbelt. And um, when we had our briefing, it occurred to me that because this driver was pregnant, that maybe the seatbelt was really important. And the question was, okay, because she ended up having a premature birth. Right. And so the question, what was the effect of the seatbelt? Did the airbag go off? Did the front airbag, did the side airbag, blah, blah, blah. So we had all that discussion. And then uh, uh, I made the video. And then a month later, it was, well, we just got some bad news. We just got a, we just got some uh, dash cam, and, oh. she, and she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. There you go. I said, well, now you need to test. So then the test comes out. And so you asked about the output. So you make the video. Honestly, that's the best practice that you guys need. But, th but that's what I mean. So we'll have sent you the now corrected video. You just send us the narration. We do all the editing. Oh, okay. Meaning... Is it me who would be speaking in the video? Do okay. you speak in, into your computer, your iPhone, or, well, I guess they have other kinds of phones. Uh, Are they seeing my face or just audio? Just the face. Okay. Yeah, but we got on the audio. And then after that, you're done. Okay. Um, you're done. We I, actually, I heard someone knocking. I don't know. It's, it's, it's impending doom. Over. Carry on. Yeah, no idea. There we go. Yeah. Um, but the uh, uh, it's survey question. So... We're going to show you how they're feeling. What do you want to ask for survey questions? Gotcha. So and and yeah. the survey questions, the survey question can be really helpful because you can ask, uh, you want to ask about credibility. Yeah. You want to ask about liability. Uh, the guy with the cell phone, whose fault was it? So you can ask the question two different ways in two different spots in the survey. Got and, it. And think 10 questions. So the second question could, hey, did it matter that you had a cell phone? And then the ninth question could be, no cell phone was found in the wreckage. Does that influence your decision? Got it. So we help you. In the setup call, I'm taking notes and trying to figure out what you want to find out. Uh, but then I give my questions over to our social scientist. Yes. And she could be on the call with me or not. But 
she writes them in psychologically so that people on their smartphone can answer them easily. So in other words, the, 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 the data I ultimately get back having engaged in the services, is it a yes or no? Is it like very emotive? Like what does it tell me? Yeah, so uh, 10 survey questions. Some of them can be open-ended. Like here's an open-ended question. The last question we always ask is, uh, is there anything else you would like to know? Okay. Uh, but most of the questions are multiple choice because then we can give you meaningful data. Right. So, uh, um, again, back to the cell phone question. Um, somewhat influences my decision. Not at all. Influences it quite a bit. Influences dramatically. So you get, we always do, we always grade the multiple choice question because we want to give you enough data so to try and avoid yeah. central tendency. So... You're getting the answers to the questions plus your it, what's the commentary on the emotion behind the answer, if any. Okay, so what what uh, what uh, what Shelley will do, Shelley Garson, she's our social scientist. She will take the data and she will watch. There's nine emotions maps. Yes. That you also need to go on your dashboard and watch. So you've got access to the the nine maps, and the first one that you watch is called curiosity. So you're going to watch this map, you're going to watch a second map, you're going to watch a third map. And then you're going to get the survey questions right. with the data. So you can take the data and you can, here's one of the beauties. You can watch the anger map. Yes. And you can, it looks like an EKG. Oh, really? And then you can click men. Yeah. And then you can watch the difference between men and women. Wow. I mean, that is huge. That's huge. And so we actually just did a presentation. So the men's graph looks like this. Gotcha. Yeah. The women's graph looks like this. Wow. I want to ask you, do you, you're collecting a lot of data through this. Do you, are you going to collate this into something that then can be produced as a kind of a, a neutral analysis outside of all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Shelly writes up, Shelly will write up uh, a 20 page report. And she'll cover the objectives, which are the five objectives. She'll cover the survey questions yeah. and responses. But then she's going to make comments. She's going to say that, okay, in this particular graph, yeah. the women were sleeping. And if you didn't agitate the women in this story, then you're going to fail unless you have an all-male jury. Got it. Right? Yes. Now, the other thing is there's only 3% of trials, cases that go to trial. This is true. But every one of our attorneys can take that report into mediation. Yeah. I, I want to ask you something. This is a bit sci-fi sci and maybe judges would never allow it. But is the future of this something that you could bring in to say voir dire, have some kind of camera set up on a, on a laptop that will be giving you feedback on, on the motion straight away? Yeah, Again, I, I, there's a very, we talked about this before we filmed and myself and Bob probably reached the conclusion or many would that maybe this would never be allowed by judges. But it seems like the technology might get you there one day. Is that right or no? Well, no, it's interesting because the product we're working on right now is for witnesses. And a witness could be, obviously, it could be your plaintiff or it could be an expert witness. And what we're working on is give us a one-minute video. Of a depot or something? Of, well, it could be from a depot. But better is, and I've done this with attorneys, is, okay, you got the depot footage, and but uh, I think depositions probably are an unnatural environment. Yeah. So uh, with your plaintiff, for example, would be just do a Zoom with him or her and just ask him three or four questions, the ones that you want to know um, to find out if she or he can carry the weight, right? Meaning emotionally respond appropriately or just, no, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. No, so in this case, it's, I, I call it, uh, uh, I call it uh, credibility, right? Right. So you want to know if your plaintiff can be, how that plaintiff is going to be received. Like if that plaintiff is just a, a jerk personality, yeah. this is a way to show that person that he's a jerk and he's got to tune it up here. But back to the product. So we're developing a product that says, give us a minute video of somebody. Yeah. And based on that video, you might even take that, per you might not take that person's case. Charles, you're kind of blowing my mind here. Or. I want to ask you, sorry, I want yeah, to ask yeah. you. 
Are you California based? Is this national? What are you looking at? Yeah, no, it's definitely national. I happen to be in California. Everybody else is in uh, Florida. Wow. I mean, th these are the kind of tools that are just going to be, I, I presume eventually they'll become kind of ubiquitous across our industry. I guess that would be your hope naturally. Yeah, no, no, back to your question about what idea. What about the idea that, uh, what about the idea that, okay, so we've got one person in a controlled environment. It could be the neurologist. How many cases have you been involved with where you found out afterwards that the jury hated the neurologist? Yeah. Or let me be nicer, the jury didn't quite like that neurologist. Right. Be nice to know that going in. Yeah, right. Not that you're going to get rid of his expertise, yeah. but maybe you can help him manage his personality, which might Absolutely. be Absolutely. And I, I can tell you, certainly I've come across experts in my time that are highly qualified given the correct technical answers, but for whatever reason, jurors bloody well hate them. So this is something that could be analyzed through these kinds of systems. Help you manage the expectation. How about somebody that has a bicycle accident wants yeah. to sh uh, sue the rubber company and the pedal company and the bike company and the distributor and the uh, attorney is able to show her or him a report that says, you know what? Everybody said put a Band-Aid on it and get out of my life. Guys, we're moving <laughs> into a brave new world here. This is the kind of thing. I mean, God almighty. This is unbelievable. So tell me, do you envisage this as something that would go with traditional jury consultant type focus group, group people? It's just another tool they could use as well. No, it, would, it would change your life. It would change. Imagine if you had, well, back to the idea that you've got, what, 40 people? Yeah. Right? And I haven't been in, the, I, I, haven't I, been in want, that selection. Though. I must admit, I don't do a whole lot of focus groups myself, but a lot of my friends do. But no, do. back to one year. How, yeah. many, how many people come in the first wave? Yeah, it's it's it'll be a full and panel. It'll be 14, 16, double, triple. It's, yeah. Okay, so you've got 16 people and you're asking questions and you've got either a consultant or someone from your firm trying to take notes. It's often just me. It's, well, that's impossible. Yeah. So you're, you're thinking, oh, I like number 16, but I, I, I can't make a note of that right yeah, now, right? right. So um, right now our camera work is individually, but um, I think the, the iPhones and the, and the, um, uh, what's the, the Samsungs, they have multiple cameras on their back, right? So what if our camera was able to record or analyze all 16 people at once now again i i think this is we again it was a fascinating potential because obviously i think we normally you're not allowed to film jurors and not allowed to do all that but i suppose the ai tech doing it that might feed it live is no different than the human who might be sitting there making conclusions as well so that would probably be the argument some trial lawyer will make in the next 15 well, years well i think you're the guy to do it i think that uh now the question is is it an invasion of privacy if you get to do it, does defense get to do it? Although we know they would be a couple of years behind. Well, um, yeah, right. I mean, it'll become like an arms race of recognition of emotions, I suspect. I mean, this is the tech kind of technology that it's just it's so interesting. Like we're in, we, we often talk about this amongst ourselves, like the various technologies introduced through artificial intelligence and how they'll affect. Mm. They certainly affect uh, the, the written world we're in. But it seems like technology like this may eventually make inroads into the kind of uh, the emotional content that we engage in is in dealing with these grand operas. Yeah, I think that we're going to, I mean, I think that our goal is to make it as easily more and more digestible. So we're constantly talking about okay, how do we make this instantly useful to you guys. Yeah, right. Right. And, you know, keep in mind, we're doing 100 people. So we do 50 men and 50 women. And that I go, this is where I go immediately on the case debriefing. Yes. I go to our first chart and our second chart. Our second chart is is um, anger, fear, and disgust mixed together. So I spend time there and say, okay, let's look at all the spikes. You have to watch it back and figure out whether that's good for your theme, bad for your thing. But the easiest one is, okay, just flip between men and women. So if you have a jury consultant, just have him or her, Claire Plotkin, you mentioned. Okay, have her watch this six Claire's times. great, by the way. Hello, Claire. Hello, Claire. But have her watch it six times. And Harry. Yeah. And if you wanted to, you know, we get the demographics we get. Okay, we've got 50 women. Here's their age group. Here's their income. Here's their ethnicity. Yeah. And if you were, I and mean, we get this all the time, it was, I need an L.A. audience. Why do you need an L.A. audience? Because it's different than an O.C. audience. Is that true? I don't know. But to me, it's about the human story. It's right. like, you know. No, but have you noticed, like you mentioned the emotion disgust. 
is there different areas that we'll have more discussed than say some yeah, yeah we don't know that I mean, we don't know we're too busy to figure that out but it's, it's figurable outable it's, it's figurable outable yeah sure oh wow yeah yeah, I mean, I know that you guys that listen, uh, there's, a, there's a guy in Dallas, I can't remember his name, Petrie, Petrie, uh, but he spends a lot of time on the political side, right? Yeah. And you hear guys talking on the East Coast about, oh, I'm from West Virginia, we're pretty conservative, and uh, nine out of 12 people on my uh, jury are f from this camp. Well, but the politics doesn't enter into it, so it's the human reaction. I mean, come on, are people going to react to a baby being killed? Yes. Uh, Right. The same in Seattle as in Florida. Absolutely. I mean, they're going to have, we're capturing their subconscious reactions. I want to ask you a question on that. Just, I'm just deadly curious now. I've done, in, in my own recent career in my firm, we've done a lot of cases where, wrongful death cases, where the decedent had drugs in their system, like methamphetamine. Yeah. Have you tested that particular issue? Uh, actually, it's a, a, that's, a, that's a really good question. So, um, no, we haven't had a case like that. However, well, buckle up, my friend, Charles. I'd uh, be sending you some. But, okay, but here's a, we've, we've had cases like um, the person involved in this case was homeless. I've had one of those, too. The person involved in this case in a very conservative town in the southeast is, uh, is gay lesbian trans so uh oh yeah no he was a beautiful one in california where an incident happened and you know your cases take how many years to get to trial and in between time this person transitioned right so the attorney is oh, i gotta explore that yes now you can tick uh you can stick eight people in a room and discuss it but you can ask 100 people and you'll get the barometer right away let me ask you one other question that occurs to me in terms of your survey and you ask a series of questions, whatever detail that the juror or the attorney wants. Do you have situations where the answer doesn't match the emotion? I'd imagine that's uh, yeah. That, you that know, no, you do. You've got a little bit of wobble, and uh, uh, like for instance, on an issue like that, let's say right. let's say a, a delicate cultural issue yeah. that certain people have different views on, right? Okay. And they might be embarrassed to to. To, to tell what their emotional instinct is. They might say no when they're actually thinking a yes or feeling a yes emotionally. Yeah. Are you, have you tracked that? So, uh, no, but let me answer the question. So there's a survey questions where people can lie. Yeah. Right, and that's the written response. You know, did it influence blah, blah, blah. No, they could be lying there. Though you can go back into the movie and you can watch as you talk about it. So you can say, okay, let me just watch this 30 second piece and let me watch the women. Right. Or you could say, well, let me watch the women that are in their 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s. So that's where you can test it. Wow. Uh, and no, we haven't, we're not that. But it, it goes yeah. back to that original idea of an FBI agent going, that dude's lying, he's saying one thing, not matching the same thing. So it's just a fascinating series of metrics to go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, it's all it's all metrics. And and actually, the FBI guy, we're a light year ahead of him because he's he's looking at the physical, visible reaction, and we're getting the we're getting the facial before it's visible. So wow. we truly are getting the unconscious or subconscious response. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell you what, I want to say, if this is deployed by spouses against their other spouses in the in the family home, it's going to wreck a lot of marriages. So I think as much as I love it in my industry, I wanted to stay the F away from from uh, from from homes around America and elsewhere. But yeah, it's absolutely yeah. fascinating. I want to tell you, Ashley Charles, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, that's pretty easy. The cell phone is 415-530-8742. And uh, email. Email is uh, Charles at Emotion Track. Emotion track. Did you get that? If not, play it back a second. Yeah. Listen on again, as I often do. And yeah, you know, the founder is Aaron at Emotion Track, and uh, my other colleague is Jonathan at Emotion Track. So we're on the case, and you know, our our goal, our goal is to help you a find out the gaps that you don't are, aren't aware of, uh, so you can avoid process uh, surprises, but really it's to let you orchestrate 
the case as you want it to play out. Let me tell you, so how long have you guys been doing this now? How long has this business been existing and available to attorneys? Well, I've been, this is my third year in it. They've, it's the, the AI has been in development for four years, four plus years. Are and you getting a lot of repeat customers? I assume you are. No, that's, how, that's what's really interesting is we'll have someone that work on a case and, and get a $126 million verdict and we don't see them again. That seems like a foolish strategy for the one who made a hundred and twenty-six million dollar verdict, whoever that is. Now we might not. Uh, uh, we might have only played a small part in there. Right. And in in that case, one of the small parts we played was testing the upper limits of the valuation. Gotcha. Well, here's another a great example: a huge case with three um, defendants. So an attorney might have gone in thinking defendant A was where his we used to say bread was going to be buttered. Gotcha. But the survey responses show, well, if that's your strategy, if that's your strategy, you are going to fail because one third of the people thought that defendant yeah. C yeah. was the culprit. Well, I can tell you, my boss, Mr. Hollenpour, he, he he hates that word, by the way. Um, Which boss, one? Boss. Oh, boss, like yeah. We're comrades, of course. Um, he is very into technology, so I'm going to tell him, as soon as this is over, I'm going to tell him all about this, he blow away. But do you, do you, would you ever have a kind of retainer package where firms can have you on the hotline, kind of, we're going to say- Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. exactly. No, we, we've got one, we've got a, we've got the 20-page report, and we've also got a, a two-page report, which okay. is, put the video in the morning, you get um, the valuation. Well, I tell you what- I, And that's a, that's yeah. a, so just on that one, someone called us up the other day after a Mitnick conference. And then on a Saturday, someone called us on a Sunday and said, hey, I have a case on Tuesday. I'd like to use you guys yeah. on that valuation thing. Right. So she made a video on Monday midday. We tested it Monday. We gave her the result. So that for her was, I need to be confident in asking for $5 million bucks. Yeah. Because, I have no problem asking for any amount of money. Well, because some, I mean, you've got to have a reason to be committed to $5 yeah. million. Bucks. Right. I and, agree. It, and it's not, a, it can't be an intellectual commitment it's got to be this is what this person deserves from his or her life circumstances and what has happened here so justice deserving this person oh yeah so does a homeless person person deserve the five million the answer is yes and more the, we'll get you 35 the, the answer is yes but there are some venues where people wouldn't say that tell me this um, do you are you guys on the conference scene? I, I sometimes go to conferences. I haven't seen a booth of yours. Is that something you guys? Well, do? we go primarily. We went to National Trial Lawyers. Okay, we very always good. go there. We go to all the TLU events. Okay, uh, we tend to go to Lanier and. Um, do you so, do Cala, and that's one of the ones I would recommend. Yeah, we don't do Cala. We haven't done it. I'm sure Bob will have you at Laudy Grad. No, uh, no, no question. About we want that. to do the ones where the attorneys are there to learn. So, yeah. you know, something like Lanier as everyone comes out no, with hundred, yeah. sucking on the fire hose. But, yeah. uh, you know, if they go to a vendor and they have to talk. And I mean, most of you all, all understand that um, the legal industry is about 15 years behind most other industries in terms of technology. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, so there's a lot of catch up to do. And a lot of it is just process. A lot of it is content. A lot of it is taking uh, process and streamlining it, making it 100 times quicker, blah, blah, blah. But this is really taking you guys into a different dimension. I really think so. I mean, again, it's it, we. A lot of us were thinking that AI was mainly roaming around in the in the realm of writing and reading, yeah. but it seems like this might be an inroad into the other fancy stuff we do, and that's both exciting and terrifying. But let's 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 focus on the excitement. Let's this use is, this as a new tool. Talk to Mr. Bronson here. He, I can confirm that he's a legit a legit fella, and uh, and this seems like a really exciting business. It's so, fun. We're having a ball. Sir, pleasure meeting you. Yeah, I'll yeah, be in touch. Fine.